What's happening guys? Brandon Johnson here again and thanks for joining me. Today is a very special day because today I'm doing a guitar lesson on that classic bluegrass tune, Man of Constant Sorrow. This is the instrumental version though, so I'm not going to bust out into, into song here. This is one of those songs where it almost seems like they just turned, hit the record button, gave Norman Blake a guitar, or he just brought his own guitar. And they just started, started recording the song. I mean, it's really loose. It definitely has the melody, the famous melody of Man of Constant Sorrow. And that being said, this is not meant to be taken as an exact interpretation of the song. Because really, it should just be open to your own interpretation. So I hope you enjoy this one, and let's check it out. Let's take a look at measure number one of Man of Constant Sorrow. So this song's in the key of G, and we're playing right off the bat here out of the G position. And we're going to start with a four note pickup here. And this, this four note pickup at the beginning of measure number one is actually going to come in on the three count. One, two, three. And then right there is going to be the beginning of measure number one. So that pickup is going to be an open D on an eighth note, followed by another open D to third fret D to open G. Okay, right after we play that pickup, we're going to move right into measure number one. And we're starting on a slide up here, and we're going to slide up from the third fret D to the fifth fret D. And that's going to be on a downstroke. And we're doing this with our ring finger so that we can immediately come in here with the third fret B. So after we play this slide, third fret D to fifth fret D, we're going to place our index finger on the third fret B. And we're just going to hold that kind of like a little, a little two note chord there. We're going to actually hold that. So that's kind of the move for the very, very, very beginning of the song there. So we have our pickup, and then right into the slide, to that upstroke on that third fret B. So that's how we're going to start Man of Constant Sorrow. Now once we're in this position here and we're holding this kind of two note chord, it's actually a three note chord because we have that open G. So once we get into that position, then we can start cross picking over this chord and we're going to do sort of a, a, a upstroke cross picking pattern here and it's going to look like this. So you'll see what I'm doing there is I'm playing an upstroke on that third fret B, an upstroke on that open G, and then a downstroke on the fifth fret D. And we're kind of making use of some open strings and some octaves here. Of course, we have two 16th notes right at the end, which are going to be two open Ds. And those two open Ds right there are going to lead us into measure number two. Okay, and when we look at measure number two now, measure number two is, you know, like, like any measure in any song, it's a continuation of the previous measure. So at the end of measure number one, we have two sixteenth notes on an open D. And then at the beginning of measure number two, we have two more sixteenth notes on an open D, followed by an open G. So when we think about the transition between measure number one and measure number two, 
you know, we don't need to be super precise with this, but one way to think about it is you want to hit the D string four times. One, two, three, four, and then the open G. So that's one way you can actually time that out. Okay, and then right after that open G, that's on an eighth note, so we have a slight, slight rest there, basically a sixteenth note rest. And then we're going to land on a G chord, basically, here, and we're just going to kind of cross pick over it. And again, this, you know, this man of constant sorrow, if you've heard this song, you know that this is not about precision. It's really about feel, just like, you know, all music should be. But this song is really specifically about feel and the way Norman Blake plays it. So right after that open G, we're going to land on a downstroke on that third fret low E. And what I like to do here is just basically hold an open G chord and just kind of cross pick that open D and that open G. You could do it that way, or you could play it with all downstrokes like I have in the tab there. Okay, and then right after we play that kind of G cross picking part, we're gonna go into a slide here. And I like to play this slide from the second fret G to the fourth fret G with my middle finger. And the reason I play that with my middle finger is because you need your index finger to land on that third fret B. And then we're going to go back down to the 2nd fret G. We're going to play that pull off. And then we're going to cross pick two more notes right at the end. 1st fret B to open E. Alright, so that slide up part, the second half of measure number 2. Let's take a look at measures one and two now with the pickup all the way through to the metronome. And remember, the pickup comes in on the three count. One, two, three, four, two, two, three. Okay, when we look at measure number three now, we're moving into the C chord here. So we have the G chord for the first two measures, and then we have a C chord for the third measure. And when we land on the C chord, we're actually going to start this on a hammer-on from the open G to the second fret G. And then with our index finger, we're going to land on that first fret B. All right, so you could do it that way. You could play a downstroke and then an upstroke, or you could do two downstrokes. It's player's choice on that one, but just know that when you land on that first fret B, that's an eighth note. So there's going to be a slight sixteenth note pause before we go into what is this kind of C cross picking pattern here. And we're going to start on a downstroke on the root note of the C chord, which is the third fret A. And then we're going to play an upstroke on the first fret B. But you'll notice here that I'm actually holding the C major chord, so you know, you're not meant to actually pick up your finger to play these notes. This is, this is a cross picking pattern over a C major chord here. So we're going to play this third fret A, first fret B, and then back to third fret A, and then open G. So that's our pattern there. And again, this is not meant to be totally the most precise pattern ever. You can actually you can syncopate it your own way and play it to your own liking, honestly. It's just 
This is just an example of how to play it. I mean, you can even cross pick over, you know, the the over the D string, for example, on this C major chord. You can do it that way as well. It's just a matter of kind of what's comfortable for you. So after we play that C major cross picking pattern there, we're going to play a little bit of a pickup into a D major chord in measure number four. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna play open G to first fret B to open E as a chord. Okay, so that's, that's gonna be the first one. The second one then is gonna be open G to second fret B to open E. And then we're gonna land at the beginning of measure number four just on a straight up D major chord. Okay, and that D chord is the beginning of measure number four. Okay, at the beginning of measure number four here, we have a D major chord, and the D major chord is second fret G, third fret B, and then second fret high E. And you can add in that open D in there as well if you want. But really because we're coming off of this walk up in measure number three, you, know, you don't necessarily need to play that open D, although you can. Just make it sound a little fuller, and that's, that's another way to do it. And what Norman Blake actually does in this song is he sort of he sort of pl plucks each string when he plays this walk up, so he does kind of like a as opposed to a as opposed to just hitting all the strings on a downstroke. He'll do like a little bit more of a sweep kind of through it. And that just gives it a nice ascending quality. And, just gives it a little bit more finesse and feel, which, like I said, is what this song is really all about. So after we hit that D chord right there at the beginning of measure number four, we're going to do a little cross-picking pattern over the D major chord here. So again, we're just going to hold this D major chord, and then we're going to cross-pick over it. We're going to start on an open D string on a downstroke. So there's your pattern there. We're going to do the open D. Upstroke on the 2nd fret high E, upstroke on that B string 3rd fret, and then again the downstroke on that D, which is going to kind of start the pattern over again. So you'll see that this pattern repeats twice, so it sounds like this. that little cross picking pattern there we're going to land on the open D to second fret G okay so open D to second fret G again that's essentially just just a D major chord so you can really just hold this D major chord for the entire first part of this measure here and after that you'll notice we have a hammer on pull off Hammer on pull off. So, what does that even mean, really? Well, you know, we've got a hammer on, so the hammer on's gonna be open B to first fret B. That's gonna be on a downstroke. And then the pull off is gonna be on the first fret B to open B. So what we're really doing here is this. So, we've got the hammer on, and then the pull off, and that's gonna result in a hammer on pull off. Right, so you're, you're playing this on a downstroke, so it's downstroke on the open B, and then the hammer on pull off. And you want to do that with your index finger, I mean obviously because there's not any room to play it with any other finger here, but especially because we're going to be doing this slide up at the end of that hammer on pull off from the 2nd fret G to the 4th fret G. And then we're going to land on an open G beginning of measure number five. All right, 
let's look at measures three and four now, all the way through. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. Okay, and that brings us into measure number five. Okay, when we look at measure number five now, measure number five is what I would consider to be kind of like a, a signature Norman Blake type of turnaround sound that he's, that he's playing here. And what's interesting about this form is it actually has five measures in the A part, which is kind of unusual, and most fiddle tunes have you know, four measures. So, you know, this is, this is what you could call crooked. Sometimes you'll hear people say that the song is crooked. And what that means is that there's, there's like another measure at the end, or maybe there's another, you know, just another beat at the end or something like that. Um, so when we look at measure number five here, this is really a kind of a turnaround measure. And um, we're just basically cross picking over a G major chord, but we're doing a really, really cool walk down melody thing here and the inflection in the, in the syncopation is very very signature Norman Blake here so let's take a look at this so we're starting on an open G because we're coming off of that slide remember in, in measure number four we're going so we're going to land on that open G at the beginning of measure number five and we're just going to go right into a G major chord shape here and we're going to do two downstrokes to start so we're going to we're going to start on that open G and then there's a 16th note rest and then we're going to land on the root note of the G chord which is the third fret low E all right so there's a little bit of cross picking going on here but we're going to play the open G and then we're going to play that third fret low E and then go back to the open G on an upstroke we're going to hit that with our middle finger. So the same finger that we're using to play the root note of the G chord here, we're going to move it down to the A string. And then we're going to go down again, and this time we're playing 2nd fret A with our index finger. And that 2nd fret A there is going to be on an 8th note. So we have a 2nd to just get back to that 3rd fret low E. Just kind of cross pick that G major chord out all the way to the end. All right, let's look at all of part A now, all the way through to the metronome. One, two, three, four. Two, two, Okay, and that leads us into the second half. <laughs> 